That's okay. Know. We're connected. That's really funny. I have too many Instagram um, accounts, obviously. I have a lot that I'm locked out of. I don't know how to get them back or how to log it back in. So I'm like. <laughs> um, I have I have mine. And I have Cape and Castle. And I have Coffee and Chaos. And mm -hmm. now my dog oh, has I heard them do that. They'll have like a. Oh my gosh, I forgot the name of it. Bernstein. I can't remember her name. Anyway, her dog has one. He has his own like. Instagram. There's like almost a million followers on her dog account. He's doing better <laughs> than I am for sure. Um, makes me feel really bad about myself. Um, I did it because I wanted some. He with him being a therapy dog at work. He has like a, he has like a certificate that says he's a therapy dog. And I like there's a place you can get a frame to put a photo of him. And I'm like, oh, well, I can't just use a phone like a photo that I take with my phone and my friend's a professional photographer so I was like hey no. can we do like a fall photo shoot um yeah like you know I'd love some nice photos of me and him and also he just needs a really good photo for work so she took these photos and she came back to me and she's like okay listen this dog yeah. is so photogenic and he hams it up for the camera like he the looks he'll give when he you pull a camera out, like he is like the head cock and like all these things. So she was like, "Have you ever thought about like making him a dog oh. model?" And I was like, "Oh my god, that's not a not a thing. They can't. That's not a thing." And I was talking to a bunch of my coworkers, and they're like, "No, like I agree. Like he's just so pretty, and he has so much charisma that comes through his photos." And I'm like, "Well, how do you even how do you do that?" And they're like, "Just make him an Instagram account." And then they'll like come to you because if you get yeah, followers, you get interactions audience. and stuff. So, so he's uh he's doing pretty good. He's in like week three, and he's got like thirty some okay. followers Mine's already. So. One over here. I did not put him away like I did last time, and I'm regretting it already. I'm like, mm. I just locked my mouth. My dad's like a fool. It's not the sweet rescue that's a perfect angel. It's the bulldog that I got during COVID. <laughs> and we've been through eight weeks of dog training with an mm -hmm. ex-Marine. So he's picked with the Marine, but then oh when he comes God. in with me, no. So I'm the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I've been really, I've been very fortunate. Sawyer, Sawyer's a border collie Australian Shepherd. Um, I've had like blue healer before, so I was very much expecting him to be like, yeah, crazy hyper. And I was ready for that. I'm like, okay, like I'm prepared, I'm prepared mentally. I'm, I'm prepared for and you hear that all the and time. He... Yeah, he's not. Oh, he's chill. He's a little this grandpa. This bulldog of mine, he is wild. Like, my kids know him. <laughs> uh, everybody knows him. They're like, this is the most active bulldog I've ever seen. I'm like, I know. No. The third one. So the there is like, were like lazy couch potatoes, house hippos. And then this thing shows up. He, yeah, he's wild. He's wild. He's lab. He wants to stay outside all day. And in the heat and humidity of Houston, he can get heat stroke. He wants to swim in the pool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's like a bulldog stuck in a, stuck in a Labrador body. Yeah, I Sawyer is he's definitely unique. Um everybody always thinks he's uh -huh. a lot older than he is. He just turned a year and a half. And like no like five. I was like, no, no, he's still a baby. He has was been this he, way since I brought he him. He was home. almost a COVID baby then. Um, yeah, he was a co he was a COVID baby. So he I got him from we have yes. a lot of Amish communities up here. They have a lot of blue healers, border collies, Australian shepherds. The mix why is of that to help in their fields them. or very good working dogs, and they're also very they're low maintenance mm -hmm. really. So like if they have a job and working, then after the work is done, they're fairly low maintenance because they've exhausted all of their energy oh, okay. doing what they do. So they're yeah. extremely low. Oil, um, they're kind of like little 
the Wanderers, so they've always been like a cowboy's best friend. But they have to, um, have, they have, to have a so job they, because uh, I know of a friend who got two and stuck them in an apartment with her, and she's like, yeah. they, uh, she had, yeah. she started yep. running because like she well she started riding her bike because they're so destructive mm -hmm. being in that apartment. Like she would come home and literally like her couch cushions would be destroyed. Oh yeah, they have really bad anxiety because they're yeah. they're a people dog. So if there's nobody around for them to like, oh like I you know, I'm here to make you happy. Yeah. I'm here to do what I'm supposed to do to my job. If no one's there for the job, they're like, Oh well uh, exactly I guess I'll just good. wreck this place then. So yeah, my blue healer was very um you know, I had a situation where she was always able to have yeah. someone with her so she was never home by herself really great and she had a lot of running in but she was still a little but didn't she go to work with you sometimes she uh, didn't uh, my boy does now so yeah so I had um, I had her for 13 years and that was, that was my first dog so she was my, we had gone to this farm and they had I was like mom I was young. I think I was like 12 or 13. I was like, Mom, their dog is blue. And I thought that was like the like the dog's blue. How is that a real yeah. thing? I want one. What is that? And they are like top-notch tough. So this dog in particular mm -hmm. was a female named Jewel. Jules. Yeah, and she was so sweet. But she was also like, when it was time to work, she was a powerhouse. She'd gotten kicked in the jaw by a horse. And it had dislocated her jaw. And she slammed her face into, like, the concrete paving uh, part that they had on the farm. And, like, relocated her own jaw, looked around, oh and took gosh. off back of the horses again. Like, they are so, they are built, they are built different. They're the definition of built different. Like, they're nuts. So I was like, you know, it was a really great experience. She was an awesome dog. And I think that I had such an attachment to her that I don't know that I can ever Aww, have another blue healer. Sweet. Yeah, there's just like, there's just something. I'm like, I don't, I just don't know if I could ever have another. Gotta be the only one. So I don't know. I've always loved Border Collies. And I don't know, you know, my randomness coming into play where I was like, I want a Border Collie. And I was, my mom was like, yeah, good luck with that. Okay, go ahead. So I was looking everywhere and nobody had any, nobody had any puppies available. And I was like, you know where I can go? That's not going to be advertised. There's just roads that we have yeah. in the area that are all Amish families. So I was, I'm just going to go down this road. I'm going to start at the beginning and I'm going to go till I find a puppy. And that is how, that's actually how we got in the blue healer in the first place. So I take off after work and I told my mom, I'm not coming home until I have a dog. <laughs> She's like, okay. So I was on like house number two and the guy was like, well, I've got one left, but if you don't like him, my cousin just had a litter and he had both, they were seven weeks, it was seven weeks old. They had both parents right there on their property. And I always like to see the mom and dad. Um, and they were both super sweet. They were well taken care of. They were very gentle and kind. And so one of the kids went to go get the puppy. And I was like, okay, there's no pressure to like, it, ha it doesn't have to be this dog. There are other puppies to go choose from. So no pressure. And he brought this dog around the corner of the barn and our <laughs> eyes met. And I was like, take all my money. Love. This is my dog. dog. <laughs> oh my God. So he put him in my arms and he snuggled right up to me. And usually when you get one from an Amish farm, they're going to have like an accident in the car because that's such a, that's not something that they've been exposed to. And we were like 45 minutes away from home. So it was going to be a long car ride back. Nope. He slept on oh, my shoulder the entire ball, way. Home. Huh? Oh, and I, so I was like coming up with his name in the car and I was like, I'm not, I'm not a sap. But I'm, like, crying the whole way. I'm like, he's so beautiful. I love him so much. So I, I came home. And, I agree, Joyful Reads. That is um, so sweet. 
Oh man, he, he's the sweetest little thing. So I came in the door and I was like, look what I got. And I, like my parents couldn't believe that I just, like, oh my God. My mom was like, yeah, you meant it when you said you weren't coming home without a puppy. And he was in um, oh. obedience classes at That's eight rough. weeks old. Oh. And the instructor, yeah. He, so he had to have this, this stuff to become a therapy dog. And I was like, the, the sooner I start him, yeah the better everything will be. So I got him in, I got him AKC registered. I went through that whole process. And then I got him in with a local woman who trains. And she's like, well, she's like, I don't, I, I'm not super like fully comfortable with this because he's about a month and a half younger than all the other dogs in the class. So I'm just concerned that you're going to pay for these classes and he's not going to get as much out of it as the other ones are. And I said, listen, I'm not worried about that. If we do this and he doesn't do as well, yeah. we'll just do it again. So she was like, oh, okay. Like if you're sure. And I was like, yep, nope. This is a choice that I'm making. Let's do this. He's a freaking rock star. Just literally like, the week after tech. week. <laughs> oh, for sure. So she's like, oh, like, you know, he's, he's very different for, so they're called border Aussies oh, okay. or polyesterolian shepherd mixes. And she's like, Oh, like he's such a calm border Aussie. Like these are two very hyperactive breeds. And he was just so, we're just very in tune with each other. And I think that that makes a really big difference. And I tend to be on the calmer side of things. So I think that with him being an Australian Shepherd, they're very empathetic. So he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, she's calm. So I Total feel calm. Energy. So, oh man. Yeah. So we did this six weeks. This whole time he's like coming to work with me and everyone is fawning over him. Like he's the first dog they've ever seen in their life. And then he does another eight week course, which is a prep course yeah, for testing or certification. The, um, yeah. They're not supposed to take or they don't recommend taking the canine good citizen test until they're a year. But when they're under a year, it's called star puppy. And it's the same thing, same testing point, same everything, except that you can use treats and you can't use treats for the canine good citizen. So he takes the six week prep course. We, we do the damn thing and he rocks it again. So we go back, we do all the testing and it's like simple things like they have to be able to walk by a strange dog and a strange person on a leash acting appropriately. Yeah. They have to accept a stranger petting them, uh, have to be able to like sit, come lay down, you know, just it's, it's fairly basic. It's like a 10 point. It's basically just to make sure that they have the proper temper temperament to be around they, strangers. Like, dog, because, it's, uh, you and, never know what you're going to get. It's just a roll of the dice as to who passes you or the interactions. Yeah, and I can definitely say at the rehab, we have a maximum of 17 patients. But if we're at a full house and he walks through those double doors, they fawn. Like, they're all over. They're on top of them. So he, they have to be able to handle it, whatever. So he does really, really well. He aces it. And he gets his little badge at work. And so he's been coming to work Dang. since he was, like, Dang, five months old. That's super young. Mm-hmm. So it's like, he loves it when he, if he sees me get out any article of his clothing, a bandana, a hoodie, sweater, yeah, whatever, like, twirl, like, twirl, 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 I'm going twirl, to work today. So excited. He just, just gets very like, he's on your heels and then he sits. Like as soon as you stop moving, he sits like, okay, put, put it on, so put it on. How, how many work. days a week does he come to work with you at the rehab center? Um, I kind of let him pick, so it can be really exhausting, and some people say that it's not good oh. for them to go all five, oh. because it's like, yeah, I can see that. yeah, just like exhaust. Yeah, so he, some days, I mean, his best friend's a little Lynx Point Siamese stray kitten that I picked well, up because I'm a stray magnet. Does live at the facility? Okay. No, she's at home. You're like a menagerie. Me. Let me get all my furry babies into the car. All going to work. Like I have, I have a scent to me that they're like this girl's a this girl is a sucker for an animal, and she's gonna bring us home. So let's go. 
every time gets me every time so that's his best buddy so if he doesn't feel like leaving his best buddy in the morning i'm just yeah, like all right up. hang out with your best buddy uh, yeah. my parents live with me and i'm like you know your grandpa will be <laughs> home today hang out with your grandpa today but he averages uh at least two to three days a week sometimes more if he's really in the mood and like even if so i just took him today and we mm -hmm. got, so it was an eight hour eight hour day for him and we get home zonked out on the couch well that's he's interesting out. too because mine used to go to daycare or one of them did and so she i mean it bought me so much time because you just bring her home and she was out and so now that she's older she mm -hmm. doesn't want to go to daycare because she just is like arr, arr, and everybody and i'm like okay well okay chica she just wants to be at home on her dog bed i'm like that's okay yeah yeah um yeah i actually here's the good one so this is my next venture um we have like three wildlife rehabbers in my area which is a very small amount yeah, for a very large your, your, the area. woods are like right there in your backyard basically yeah and like it's just they're kind of few are and far between and so what happens like is raccoons they, and squirrels or what we have yeah, so there. So if you if you're to find like a squirrel outside, depending on the animal, what you do is you just go online. Like if they're injured or whatever, you go online and you look up wildlife rehabbers, and it'll bring up a site and you can type. It'll ask you like what kind of animal it is because it's different. There's small animal wildlife rehabbers, large animal wildlife rehabbers. Like there's all different ones. So for small wildlife, so it would be raccoons, fox, um, birds. Uh, squirrels, rabbits, things like that. So there's only three, like, in the immediate area. So what happens is they get full really quickly. So then they can't take on anymore, and we just don't have enough to handle all of the phone calls, basically. So it's always been, like, a, a little, like, one of those things that's, like, in the back of your head, we're like, yeah, that'd be a cool thing to do. Yeah, you know? But that you don't really think is ever like I would happen. like to so, swim with the horses in Bali. But I don't know, I know if that'll happen yes. first. Someone's gonna have to roofie me on the that's, that's right. way too much travel, plane. and I'm gonna die in the plane when it crashes in the ocean because that's what I think. So I have not found anyone <laughs> to roofie me and not sell me when we get into that country. Yeah, yeah, no, that okay, would probably so be a little bit of a struggle. Over. <laughs> is your rehabbing? Yeah, so there was, we have a lot of rabbits outside of mm -hmm. our rehab. Um, the people, our people rehab. <laughs> and they just, I think that they know it's kind of a safe location for them because it's near the parking lot, but there's lots of grass, whatever. So they've been doing a lot of construction and they got rid of our backyard. So we only have like a very small front yard. So I'm sure there's a lot of wildlife oh, yeah. that's been displaced because of that. And so I was out there. I don't even remember why mm -hmm. I went out there. I went out there for something random and I looked, there's this wild rabbit on the ground, which is very typical. And I just got this, like, I can't really explain. You just get like a weird feeling. Something's not right. Like something isn't right so for whatever reason i thought that it would be a good idea here let me kneel down and try to touch this rabbit because that seems like a super smart idea so i reached down and it went to it let me get very close before it went to move away and then when it went to move away it was almost dragging its back legs i mean oh, yeah that would be me okay like just i've known this rabbit for three seconds I'm and i'm 100 i know that's me out. because their animals are innocent and so um, I would be bawling, panicking, and trying to figure out how to help. It'd be a mess. So my thought process, because I do tend to keep my cool. So I, I like, you know, the uncontrollable, like tears are, tears are coming down and I'm like, okay, 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 okay. Like we're gonna, okay, it's fine. So I turn around, I go running back into the building. Like I'm going to grab whatever coworker I can. They're going to go sit with a rabbit. Like I'm going to figure out. A box of, of some type so I run in and of course I get like the most animal loving coworker on my team and 
her name is Mia. And I'm like, Mia, Mia, I need your help. There's a rabbit outside. I think it's hurt. I need you to go sit with it. I'm going to get a box. Okay. She's just like, okay. So she goes out and she, she sits with this bunny. I grab a box. I put some towels in it. I go out and I'm like, okay, we're going to, uh, as carefully as possible, get this rabbit into the box without getting maimed or, or injured or, in any way. <laughs> not enter the equation. And it absolutely should and have. Okay. Uh, like this is not, this is not a do as I do situation by any means. <laughs> like, please do not go out and pet the wildlife in your area. It's a bad idea. So we get this rabbit in the box. She's very sweet. Um, I'm like touching the bottom of her back feet to make sure that it's not a paralysis type situation. Um, she could still very clearly feel them. She could move them. So I'm like, okay. I'm like, I think she got hit by a car and she's got a hip injury. So we bring her inside. We gave her some water. Um, I'm like, do we have any carrots in the fridge? Like, like I'm in, now I'm in mom. Like, I, was, mom I was gonna say uh snow white so you know how snow white would call to all the animals <laughs> it's the problem okay it's like i don't if there's a word for it i'm it so i get the number i know i know one lady who i've had contact with in the past i call her up she's like oh i'm really really sorry i'm absolutely full right now like if i take in another animal my husband's going to kill me. Like, so I was like, okay, like I, I understand. So I call this other woman who I'd heard about, but I'd never interacted with. And she's like, yeah, um, I can take her. But the problem is I can't come get her in the vets. Like the vets already here right now. And like, I can't leave. So I can't come I, get her. I was like, that's okay. I'll bring her like, to you. No Give problem, me your address. Lady. We'll be there. Yeah. Like you, you got it. Like we can figure it out. So she gives me her address and it's like, like a half an hour away mind you i'm at work <laughs> so this rabbit's chilling in a box next to my desk and everyone's like coming in very quietly to like not touch her but just kind of observe and like oh she's so cute you know like we're trying to be very respectful of keeping her calm not touching her not touching her um so i like call my mom because she's my best friend and i just you know, she, I know she'll appreciate it. So I call her and I'm like, mom, I found a rabbit outside and it was her. And she, she's just like, oh my God, you're going to bring it home, aren't you? You're bringing it. And I was like, you know what? I feel like I resent the implication because no, I'm not. I did the responsible thing and I found a wildlife rehabber. Um, but I'm walking out of work so that I can drive the rabbit a half an hour away to this random lady's house. Hope I don't die. Yeah, because like she's in the middle of nowhere. So so I, you know, very gently take this rabbit out to the car and I'm like, it's okay. It's gonna be okay. I know the car is really scary. Maybe you're having PTSD because this is what hit you. Like I'm just having like we're in, now we're in counselor mode. We've gone from mom mode to counselor mode. So I get her there and the lady is just she's super sweet and I'm telling her everything I did how we got her in the box yeah. how it's like minimal handling and she's like oh she's like you know you really did a lot of people don't do that they don't they're not aware of you know they handle them too much or they just they don't they don't do any of that stuff so she's like that's really great that you did that and I was like yeah like I'm, I'm a huge animal lover like I will risk my life I am the yeah. idiot that stops in the middle of the road hey, to help the turtle yeah. across. Like, let me put my four ways on and stop four lane traffic. <laughs> I'm going to save this turtle. That's me in a nutshell. So she, she takes it and she's like, Oh, she's like, do you want the towels back? And I was like, no, Oh my yeah. gosh. Keep them. Like keep everything. And she it was so sweet. She was like, um, you can give me a call in a couple of days to see how she's doing or any updates, I'll let you know. So I waited a couple of days and then there's like that, like trepidation of what if I call and she died? Oh, yeah. And I'm, yeah, yeah, you know, and I'm like, you know what? I think that what it comes down to is if she didn't make it, she at least got a lot of 
affection and she got yeah. some love and compassion. And that's more than she would have gotten starving to death outside, not being able to get well, her own food or cold something else. there right now? Uh, it's not bad right now, but we have a lot of, oh, a lot of predators that's true. that would go after okay, what, rabbit. Especially on the open. What's the temperature what's there that? now? Uh, well, we have a huge winter what's storm that? coming um, in. Austin does um, not. Yeah. But I saw blue, it just like tracks across yep. the map. Oh, it's, it's dark blue. It's coming from 10 a.m. tomorrow, my time, until uh, Saturday, yeah. 1 p.m., like I think. three or four days it travels so, across the U.S. Yeah, yeah, but they're like, they're like, oh, 10 inches, whatever. We get like six feet sometimes, so that's nothing. So, but it's like uh, 30 degrees right now, so it's definitely going to get colder but I do hope that we get some snow because that actually helps to insulate a little bit and it's cold, but it's not like a biting cold when there's a lot of snow on the ground. You're crazy. It's all cold. So, it's all cold. Small. Oh, you, you so get used to it. When you hey. live in it, you so get used to it. That's like, I couldn't, if someone comes from, you know, California and they're like, they're cold when it's 60 degrees. It's because they're used to it. They're used to that 90 okay, degree so weather all the time. Before That's COVID, life. I took the children to New York for New Year's um, to ring in 2020, you know, new year, new decade, blah, blah, blah. Our life is going to be so great. You know, COVID comes in a couple months later. But anyway, it was like in the 30s, raining the whole time, no sunshine at all. And, uh, you know, you have to wear like, two pairs of leggings and like tops and your big winter coat. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't drinking as much water and I was dehydrated and you don't want to drink that many liquids because then you have to undo all that in order to go to the bathroom. I was like, this is a pain in the ass. <laughs> we are definitely masters of the layered yeah, clothing. I look. hate that. Yeah. I'm like, and I'm weird. I don't really like long sleeves. I don't like anything over my arms. I know. And you guys, you, guys you have, have a rough like time things over your arms before you even hit the door, and I'm like, no. Oh yeah, so it it was it was 35 today, <coughs> and I had tank top, sweater. Yeah, no, that's too many. Another jacket. That's, that's the norm. So, um, yeah, so I call I called on this rabbit a couple days later. She's doing really well, and then I called. This was just recent, so I called last week, and it had been. Uh, I think three or so weeks since I had found this rabbit, and she released her. Like she's oh, doing, she's that's doing super great. She released so her in a rehabber. Yeah. Uh yeah. So I immediately went online and I was like, "How do you do this? What What do I have to do? Do I have to get a degree in this? Because I don't know if I'm up for more school. Like I've got five weeks left for my okay. master's. I don't know. Okay, if I'm but up for you're a whole an other ordained degree. minister, so. I would think the rehabber is in with that category. All you need is a high school diploma. And you take the test. It's a pretty big test, I guess. Um, so I signed up to take the test. Is it and I will be doing all that in animals, April. though? Or can you specialize? No. So I would be going just for the small animal license. I don't want, like, we have like moose up here and so many deer. And I'm like, don't like we were joking. I was joking with my coworkers because I told them about it. And they're like, oh, of course you are. I'm kind of surprised you haven't already done it. And I was like, yeah, but like, don't call me for your moose and deer problems because I'm not housing. I know those. you have to have land. Oh man. It, you have, it's a, it's such a whole, like how the hell when I go out 45 minutes, <laughs> My house like, a, a like a horse trailer like you get the call like <coughs> hey uh i just hit this moose with my car um i'm gonna need for you to come out and rescue it no yeah i'm not no, equipped no. for that i don't know how i'm equipped for that like also i'm not getting gored <laughs> by a moose no thank you i'll get bitten by a rabid rabbit you better get all your, your baby shots and everything in order that you need. 
yeah, you have to have, have like you have to have all like tetanus yeah, yeah, and tetanus all that shot. stuff and I'll ask you like last time you had yeah, it I'm like, I don't know I never know I like I'm like don't you guys have access to my medical records that's like, not my oh, job the year was 19 I don't know I actually probably haven't had one in a while. And yeah, I work at I think hospital, if you, I so. feel like if you can't remember, it's probably time. <laughs> That's a good philosophy. That's probably true. If you can't exactly. remember, it's probably because you need one. You know, we're supposed to be talking about, speaking of animals, that um, book horse. And my sister is sick. So she, I don't know if she oh, called. Oh, she, um, okay? she had a, um event today like a christmas party i said well did you eat something bad at your white elephant party and she said, no i didn't eat at all i was like that have been the problem because it's you know oh. like pretty late but, but you can talk to me about horse oh it's so i'm surprised that you haven't read it especially since she has hey, what genre, <laughs> what um, genre is? it's I would call it, it, that's a hard one, because I feel like it has a little, so it takes you, a histor I say historical Like fiction. women's historical, historical fiction? fiction? Um, no, well, so it has, okay, so it's very confusing, so it has a lot of characters, and it jumps. Does it go back and forth and back and forth? I hate those. I usually do too. Like that's usually yes, a does huge like book turn off. Not. It's very so the author is like, I read anything by her because yeah, it's such a smooth trip, and you feel you feel every emotion, and it's so real and it's visceral. And so you're going back, I think it's, oh God, it's been a while since I read it. I think it's 1800s mm -hmm. is when it goes back to. And then 19, oh gosh, 30s maybe. I'm really terrible. It's been a while. Um, but like there's some, there's some aspects of slavery. Is it, and is you have a young boy Al? who is just, uh, yes, yes. And it's. Um, the horse that's a racing champion, that was a real racing champion horse, I believe. So it's got some fact uh -huh. mixed in with the fiction. And you have a young boy who is, you know, he's, he's a slave and he feels this deep emotional connection with this horse, which I found totally relatable with the way that I'm able to relate to animals. And he gets traded along with the horse and he thinks, well, that's okay because I can stay with him. I get to stay with this mm -hmm. horse. I get to help take care of him. I get to make sure he's taken care of. But then it, so like when, when you think it's a book about slavery and it's going to show you like this inside, you know, really emotional look at it and what people went through it kind of flips you on your head and like, now we're going to give you an inside look into the racing world mm -hmm. and the horse, horse and racing and how like gritty yeah. it is yeah. because on the outside horse race kind of glamorous. It's like everybody loves it. And you have the Kentucky Derby where everybody dresses up and it's this big deal. And it seems like this really glamorous, great thing. But then on the inside, there's a lot of issues with it. There's a lot of people who disagree with it. It's it's a really oh, yeah. it's its own world. I understand. Yeah. So then, yeah, yeah. So then, then you're like, okay, so this is like a horse racing book with some slavery in it. But then when it goes into more present times, now it's about art and it's art history because you have a character who is fascinated by these horse, this, uh -huh. these paintings of this racehorse. It's just like taking you through. It almost feels like a like a phases of life oh, interesting. type of book, and each, each phase is taking you through a different situation. So it, that's to me why yeah. it doesn't really fit in one genre, because it's just like it's so it's very unique. Mm -hmm. I've never read a book like that. I don't, but I 
will ever read another book like it, but it isn't well, my had, norm. Austin, it's not it'd be hard to market the, it. Yeah. So yeah. I had never heard of the author, never heard of the book. Um, I had a friend who is very into horse shows and horses, yeah. and she grew up around horses her whole life, and she, she would devour any book. I don't care if there's a horse in it for three sentences in a 300 book. She's going she's gonna to read it. So she had read it, and she's like, you know, like I, I really think you'd like this. Right. So right. I usually give the benefit of the doubt because I just step outside of my book comfort zone. And I read the back of it and I was like, this does not sound like my idea of a good time. I try, I try to stay away from, I'm not a huge fan of anything. I don't like, I want it to be fiction. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not into like self-help books. I'm not into autobiographies. I'm not into historical books. I'm barely into historical fiction. Like you gotta, you gotta lure yeah. me in real good for some historical fiction. So I was like, this does not check and yet, any of my you read book it anyway. boxes. Why? Did she... I was like, you know, cause she, cause I, I'm like, you know what? Like, if you don't like it, yeah. don't, don't finish it. Even though that was a complete lie to myself because I've never, ever not finished a book, even if I hated it. It's like a, I can't, like, I just think that's such a terrible thing to do, to not finish a book. Somewhat hard to get through, though. Some you just, I feel like some books you just can't relate or it's just so far from what you read. I don't know. I, there are some books that I can't finish. I didn't finish. I feel like, oh, that's so <gasps> controversial. I'd read oh, that is controversial. That night, and they're just like, oh, stop reading the thing. <laughs> wow. I, I don't know. I think that I just have a big respect for books. I mean, I was the nerdy kid that was hanging out in the library at 13, 14, like, oh, mom, take me to that big stone building where no one's at and it's creepy as shit. <laughs> like, let me go, let me go <laughs> hang out in the basement of this giant stone building that the only other person in it is a creepy ass yeah, he's dude about who's a librarian. Um, is this in your hometown? Is it yeah. still open? Oh, yeah. Colton Hepburn Library. It's a beautiful building. As an adult, I appreciate it much more than I did as a child. It's like a staple of our town. It's just, it's ginormous. And they had this really cool little corner in the basement that had like tables and chairs and like a little fake fireplace. And I'd be like, drop me off after school Whoa. Pick me up at nine when it closes. Like, I'm that, but I mean, I'm I that think nerd. that's so neat. Like in Houston, if it gets to be like 50 years old, we just level it and up goes like stealing glass. This really? Has been hundreds of years. Yeah, it's been. It would have been around the time that the town got established. That's it's been there forever. Cool, I love those old buildings. Now, granted, they better not be haunted because I don't know. I don't want to walk out with a spirit. I don't know how they attach to people, but uh uh, that's not my jam. Mm -mm. I feel like if a library was haunted, it would only be haunted with ghosts <laughs> oh, of book lovers. That's true. I feel like that would be a Because I definitely be a do. Good book, though, okay. if you wrote, like, all the lives that have passed in and out of the library. Okay, Ooh, okay that'd be look wild. at us. Let's write a book together. Okay. Funny, my friend Kate, who is an amazing artist, you wants us to write a children's book. We have, like, we have a little story down, and she she can draw her drawing like it, it will take your breath away it looks like it's gonna just is leap she right like off a the realist page. you know i love children's books and it's to me all about the illustration hers is very like um the one that always comes to my mind she did this drawing of an elephant where it mm -hmm. shows like only half of the face and like it's odd 
eyes. It, like it just looks like it's gonna so walk it, right off. It is face. like real realistic because some of the um, children's books that I've you know in recent times when I've picked them up for my nieces and nephews, girl, I could draw them. It's like a so stupid picking them up. Oh, what, what is, is that this? style? I, like if if I wanted to write the book myself, oh, I could do that. Oh, I could draw. I could draw that on my sticks. Yeah, then we can add it to our resume. We didn't say we were a good illustrator, but we are one. Didn't know that good was a requirement, but no, she she's phenomenal. So we're like we're both random, which is probably yeah. why we're best friends. Um, and we've both worked with kids. She's still working, so we were we worked together in the program where we were teaching children with autism in the school setting. That's where we met, and we just stayed very very close after we both left there and she's still teaching at a different school district and I think that we just so when we were in the program with autism there are so many mm -hmm. teachers involved in this program and every classroom it's one-on-one -on -one. so every classroom has so many teachers because if you've got eight kids you've got eight teachers plus a lead teacher like so you have all these like it's meeting of the minds all the time you have all these different perspectives all these different ideas all this different research being done about autism so there's so much that you're learning all of the time and it was just i think we both really connect to kiddos and we're both really passionate about advocating advocating for kiddos and so it's just kind of like, I don't even know how we got on the subject one day, but all of a sudden we're just like talking about like, oh my God, this is make a super cute book. Oh my God, what if we did this? And then Kate's like, okay, but wait, what if we really did do this? And I could draw it. You write it and I'll draw it. And I'm like, okay, all right, let's do it. That's so we've been talking about exciting. it a bit. For sure. Yeah. Uh, and it's, I feel like we're at a time where it's more, I don't know, like 10 years ago, I feel like, the question was like, how do you write a book? How do you publish a book? How does that happen? How do you like, it's this, like this mysterious thing that how do you get there? Kind of like being, um, being an actor or, you know, being a celebrity of any kind. It's like this unknown, how like curtain of how do you pull that curtain back and figure out how you do it? And I feel like today you can self publish. Oh, oh I think don't even get me started on traditionally published because I've done it with <laughs> debut novel mm, girl so uh but that's what i love because i feel like traditionally published are gatekeepers and if they don't believe in your story it sits or if they like your story it's another year or two before it gets published and i think wow how many books can a self or an indie author put out in that time and i do mm -hmm. see like on tiktok or instagram where these authors are querying and querying and querying. And I'm thinking, just write it and put it out. You know, if you, the agent will come, yeah. there was a, um, what is her name? I think it's Scarlett Sinclair was doing live. She does romance and she was doing a live and someone asked her like, how'd you get traditionally published? She said, I just put out so many of my own books that I self published that I made them come to me. I know. And I, really feel that's like awesome. that's going to be a strategy that works like if you can self-publish and just keep cranking it, them out and um are happy with what your product is producing for you they will come yeah yeah it's it was um when we were talking about it a couple months had gone by and i have a coworker who he came in one day and he was like hey um do you want to check this out my wife just published nice. her first children's book I was like, what? I didn't even know, like, she's she works at a college. I didn't know that she was writing a children's book. Oh, great like, oh, yeah. it could be, because I know that teachers, my, I have my two nieces and my sister are uh, teachers. And do you think they ever want to edit my stuff, even if I pay them? No. No interest. <laughs> anyway, different topic. But these teachers are always looking for authors to come in. I mean, obviously not my stuff because romance. Mm -mm -mm. But if you can, I know you cannot talk about that. that. But if you wrote children's books, I mean, you basically <clears throat> can go into the schools in your area 
and talk to them, mm -hmm. you know, bring in the book, do so many giveaways or however you want to do the marketing piece. But oh my gosh, teachers are always looking for authors to come in, read, talk about the process, empowerment for children. Man, that'd be so fun. And I think like, you know, like I had said to her, even if it was only in our community, that'd be fine. I'd be fine with that. And we have such big families that are both so supportive that they would be, they'd be peddling it better than we yeah. ever could. Built in high They'd be like, oh, you have these young children? This would exactly. be a great Christmas gift. <laughs> yeah. I, we're going to like, we've been, at first it was kind of like a joke, I think. Then my sister, I mentioned it to my sister and my sister was like, okay. She's like processing it and she's very intellectual. So she's thinking through, she's like, no, like, I think that that could work because you guys work really well together and you almost make each other mm -hmm. more creative That's when you get together. And I'm, I'm like, okay, <clears throat> I never thought of that, but I think that we do I bring out the best in each other and that's why we're best friends. And Dude, I'm like, okay, you, we're going to hammer this out. Like, this be, is you know, like what type animals teaching a lesson or about people or what? So <laughs> we have, um, I think we had decided on, I think we decided on a baby tiger. Mm -hmm. so the baby tiger can't find its mom. And, it, you know, it gets really freaked out. And it stumbles across other animals along this journey to find its mom. And so every time it stumbles across another, a different type of animal, you have, like, the adult. It's going to be an adult and a baby every time it stumbles across a different species or breed or whatever. So every time it comes across, the adult is like, oh, my God, no, like, we can't interact with, you know, this because they're, they're all bad and they're all scary and they're all terrible. And the baby animals will be like, no, I'm like, they're really nice. I met him at the watering hole. Like, he was really sweet to me. And as time goes on, like, you have, he's going to, like, meet up with them again where the parents are like, oh, okay, like, I guess he's not that bad. And we can't judge him by what kind of animal he is. And so that's, like, our that's our core. Okay, that sounds cute. I have a question. <laughs> is every new animal it meets its own book? It would be a fantastic well, because you idea. Can take a deep actually. dive. I don't know. Maybe it comes across a giraffe at the watering hole, and you deep dive into giraffes and I don't know their environment and how they are, and you know the misconceptions about them, and then like. You know, on to like, I don't know, whoever else he meets. Oh, yeah, that would be a great idea. And, you know, that lesson of like not judging, yeah, not judging anyone or. Although I feel like our them and... nation is so divisive right now, my God. You know, kids are, are not, yeah. kids tend to be very inclusive, right? Um, and so I think if you're always teaching a lesson, yeah, because there's always going to be all different size, shapes, colors, etc. And so that can be like the underlying theme across the series, but conception about giraffes yeah. or the misconception about hippos or you know, how cute would mm -hmm. that be? And then you have like a series, kind of like a little animal he meets on his yeah. journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like, and we like. It was so funny because it's like once we started, then it was like, oh, yeah, and then this happens. Oh, yeah, and then this can happen. And it's like we were feeding off of each other. And then we kind of, like, the conversation comes to an end. I'm like, I think we just kind of wrote a book. I mean, I, um, so because I write romance, I asked my daughter the other day, I was like, are you, she's 16, and I said, are you ever okay. going to read any of my stuff? She's like, no. I said, Perfect writing <laughs> not for you and so I know but I do sometimes run things by I have a, a guy friend and I'll run by run things by him and he's like okay wait say that again guys don't do that no, 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 no. so I have someone I can do that with but not in the family do you think that you would ever um, be comfortable with your daughter 50. reading them there <laughs> things <laughs> Because you're in a state of denial. We don't need, to, we don't need to, to talk about that. that. Like, yeah. I'm a nun. Yeah. Right. You know, she, Naturally. Yeah. They, they 
ate, mm, she they, did. She ate from the she stork. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Even though she did have a classmate that wound up pregnant, and I'm like, what? <gasps> it happens younger and younger all the time. I swear to God, it makes me feel. Oh my God. So old. Well, no, when you when you're my age, because you're not my age, when you can have a child and not be a teenager, I was like, mm. like that. <laughs> babies, oh my gosh, seven babies. That is the That's truth. What I say. So, yeah. But you know, then there's like, so I remember in school there was this girl. She was. I think she was 17. She might have been 16. She had a baby, and she, like, to this day, from the very beginning and to this day, best mom. I think I, she, I really think it's the person, wrong. right? Like, I, I was about, I don't know, 190 yeah. before I had my kids because I wanted to be super-duper sure, um, although I did get divorced. That wasn't part of the plan. <laughs> but I was so much more patient right. because I was further along in my career. Um, we were more established. I mean, it was kind of mm -hmm. like in, in a way, like I could let my foot off the gas when I finally did have the kids. And I have a niece yeah. who she, I'm trying to think she is 25 and she has, has three sons and she, you know, she's having them back wow. to back to back. So she has a three-year-old, a two-year-old and she's due again in, April. Wow. And she's like, I want four sons and I want to be done. I don't want to be old like you guys raising these kids. I was like, oh. oh. But she has the energy and the personality for boys. Like that girl is nonsense. She will put everyone in their place and you're just like, whoo. Yeah. 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 I think, I mean, I don't want to say everybody's different. So I don't want to say like kids are more mature these days, but I think that there's just so much more that kids have to, like, I couldn't have ever had a kid at 16 or 17. I know for a fact at 30, there's no way I could have no. handled that then. But I do see, I do see kids at 16 or 17 that I'm like, okay, yeah, like maybe not the best choice, but also they're way well, more mature at 16 that and 17 is than I was. She graduated high school at 16 with a year of college. I mean, that girl is just smart. She was just born smart. Mm -hmm. She was tutoring in chemistry other college students, and she was like 16 and a half. Yeah, so she, she's wow. kind of been this old soul. I mean, even I mean, as a baby, she met all her milestones. She's been an old soul forever. So her having, you know, she's on her second marriage because she married a military man. And he was injured. And so there's, like, by the time she got to 26, she married this, her, you know, sweetheart. He gets injured in Afghanistan. He goes into major surgery. He comes back, PTSD. They have all this, you know, going on, gets mm -hmm. divorced. And so she's like, I'm literally the oldest 21-year-old or 22-year-old at Texas A&M. And I was like, I know because... Yep. The experience in life she's led is miles ahead. She's like, I don't want to go and get drink and go to parties and rush to parties. Like, um, you know, so, so um, she actually, this, when she got divorced, you know, it was really, really sad because, of course, it's, you know, the death of a dream. And the guy yeah. who was always in the friend zone in high school reached out the, the second he found out. <laughs> yeah. And, and it works. What? They are so cute together. They've been married. Let's see if the baby is three years. So they've been married like four, maybe, okay, she's 20. Yeah, about four years. Her having That's, these babies back to back to amazing. back. I mean, she already has lived a whole lifetime. We're just turning 26 a few months mm -hmm. ago. I think everybody's path is different. I mean, society's changing all the time. Um, when I was, I remember being 18 or 19 and saying that I don't ever want to have a baby of my own. There's way too many babies out there that they don't love. They don't have anybody to love them like they deserve. Yeah. So I'm going to stop. And I remember my grandparents, my mom was mm -hmm. like, okay, I think that that's really great. I 
I, I'm rooting for you. I think that's a really great idea. And, you know, I hope that you stick with that and that you do it. But if you don't, that's okay too. Whereas my grandmother was like, you'll meet a man and you'll change your mind. I'm like, you don't know me very well. Because I'm a Taurus. I'm the touristy Taurus you've ever met. And my mom I'm sure been is my a Taurus. Name. I did not know that. So now it's all starting to make sense. Oh, I am. And I'm like, when you, if you look up on Google, like the, the long definition of a Taurus woman, every single sentence you're like, yep, that's, oh yeah, that's her. Oh yeah, yeah, that's her. And I'm, I'm super stubborn and fast forward to 30 and my plan is absolutely still to adopt and not have my own. I've been in a relationship. I've done the whole relationship thing and I just really, I'm very independent. I'm very self-sufficient and some of that probably comes from watching yeah. my mom yeah. go through a divorce and having her, you know, she taught us like, don't, don't put yourself in a position where you are completely reliant on this other person that if they left you today, you would have nothing left. Don't ever let yourself get in that position. Make sure you have a life of your own. Make sure you have things of your own assets of your own, like live your own life too. And, you know, my sister got very lucky. She um, met her now husband when she was 17. He's her first kiss, first everything. And they're married. They have two beautiful boys. They have a beautiful home. They both have great jobs they love. They're like living the Barbie <laughs> dream house life. And that's awesome because that's her path. And the longest time, I think that that was, we're very opposite. We are night and day. Like, from i mean she's blonde and very fair skinned um everybody used to make jokes that one of us there was you a mix up in the hospital for one of us sister? so there's no way we're sisters yeah but i can also see a lot of i see similarities your guys facial <laughs> expressions and i could see some similarities us i nope nope we don't look alike we don't sound alike we do not act alike you name a topic and we're on opposite ends of it every time so she, we sometimes have a hard time meeting in the middle and understanding each other on certain things, but we also are pretty good about finding yeah. now. We're pretty good now about finding a way to like, okay, agree to disagree. I respect your opinion. Um, and she, this is, this is how <laughs> this girl, she's like, Sarah, what if you adopt <laughs> and the baby's a serial killer? <laughs> And I'm like, way random. I'm like, do you feel like your child couldn't be? And she's like, well, what do you mean? And I said, do you think that only kids who are adopted end up I mean, doing I'm that? Not study. Well, well, but like when you adopt, you don't know what you're getting. I'm like, I'm sorry. Is there some new technology that I don't know about that when you I have know. a baby, you know I mean, what you're I getting? I haven't studied serial killers obviously um pretty sure i don't know a lot of if it's their homes. genetic makeup i don't know if it's they just come out that way i have no idea or if it's you know some tragedy in their life i did this huge paper i don't even remember a year ago two years ago and it was they wanted you to pick oh, yeah, yeah, yeah it was a nature versus nurture yeah on pick one and run with it me being who who I am as a human being and never being able to follow the rules a day in my life wrote, I don't believe in nature versus nurture. I believe in nature and nurture working hand in hand to create this. I don't think it's one versus the other. I think it's and a team. And when did you get on your paper? Really? I aced it. Because your take on it was aced probably it. so unique, don't you think? My professor was like, you hit like tech on technicality you hit every mark on the rubric and while you didn't take a stance you still did the topic and he goes i gotta tell you that's i, a, I mean but that's paper. such a compliment it was just like I, I just don't i don't think that it's nature versus nurture mm -hmm. i think that mm -hmm. it's a combination of both and 
And I think that maybe that's part of the issue on why we're not really that great as a society yeah. of talking about mental health. Because we make way too many assumptions about where it comes from and how it begins. And I just think that that's not, you can come from a perfectly good family and not do great things. Or you can come from a family that looks really perfect on the outside, but is actually really terrible on the inside. And I mean, honestly, the situation with my own father is a really good example. Um, with him being a severe alcoholic, he was very verbally abusive yeah. to my mom and my sister and I. And everybody thought that, oh, but he's such a great dad and he's huh? such a great husband. And um, I caught a lot of, I caught a lot of flack when he had passed because I hadn't spoken to him and I didn't go to his funeral. I had like people, I used to work at the gas station, so it's local. So I had some, I had some people come in and they were like, man, like, I can't believe that you would not come to your own father's funeral. Like you're going to regret that. And I'd be like, listen, from the outside looking in, I'm sure it painted a great picture. Yeah. But if you were on the inside looking out, oh. the picture would be totally different. And you know, I'm, I'm a, peace with with my part in the situation and what him the what's going on and what went on between him and I that's between him and I and I'm the only one left to work it out and I will work it out but it's not like perception it's all about perception and you know he was able to put on that like you know um, mm -hmm. oh I'm a great dad and I'm a hard worker and you know I, my family is taken care of but he didn't yeah. my mom was playing both parts and he was hiding that she was playing both parts so that we wouldn't, we didn't know. I didn't know until I was an adult, that all the things that she was doing and making it seem like well, it was both of them do doing that it. as a mom to protect and, your kid. I relate heavily mm -hmm. to your mom because when I got divorced, the kids were like, what, what, what? And so you don't want to crumble their reality, but you can no longer, you know, stay or hide. And I think many Mental health yeah. is tough because I feel like people want a blueprint. Mental health to mm -hmm. cancer. You know, when you fight cancer, whatever drug and protocol may work for one person doesn't work for the next. So you constantly have right. to be like changing the protocol and the process and see if this is it and that's it. And I feel like mental health is similar. It should be similar. But we want to just take a blueprint and overlay it on everyone, treat everyone the same, and just like, hey, here's all the drugs you need. That's it. Yep, we want to. We have a problem, and we want an answer, and we don't. We don't want to accept anything less, and it's just long time. You know, it like I would say to people, like, and it may not I'm, work. I'm like, got the new. Yeah, and I'm like, I would tell it would. Get, it's crazy how someone's perception of something like. I can't think of what the name of the effect is. The man is it the Mandela effect? The Nelson Mandela effect. So, like, yeah, yeah. So, so he put out this perception that he was such a great father, and I would ask people. Um, so they would have kids that I went to school with, so they yeah. would have been present at all the same functions. And I'm like, in how functions did I participate in mm -hmm. that you only saw my mom there? And like, it's like, it's yeah. like I've hit them in the face. It's like, he really put out this perception of them that that never even, it never even hit them that it was always only my mom. Well, the one thing, um, I've been to some Al-Anon meetings, not, you know, as a alcoholic myself, but just understand, you know, living with an alcoholic in the, the alcoholic brain. And what I thought was fascinating is they say, you know, there's, they called it gray matter. And so where me and you may be at a party, right? And we're together. We'll see the whole, whole party from like point A to point B or, you know, the whole linear line of the party and everything that happens. But if an al alcoholic uh, is there and they have that alcoholic brain, there, that gray matter fills in, instead of having like blackouts, they have like many losses of memory or losses of events. So the brain okay. goes back and rewrites what is logical in gray matter space. Mm -hmm. 
but maybe not what actually happened. And so so yeah. I find that fascinating because I was, that's what I was experiencing is I was saying like, here's what really happened. No, 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 no. And that alcoholic brain is so proficient at rewriting into the gray matter, a new version of reality. They can almost take a lie detector test and pass it because they do believe that is the reality of what happened. I found, I thought it was fascinating when I learned that I'm like, it answers so many questions. Yeah, and I, I've i learned so much about, like, the long-term effects that even after you stop drinking, that it can affect you so severely for such a long period of time, depending on how long mm -hmm. and how heavily you were drinking. And it's just, I mean, it's, it's hard, and it's hard because people don't, you know, you're always going to have people that are like, well, it's, it's not a disease, it's a choice. I think it starts and as a choice. And then it becomes it's a choice. Um, you know, my sister and I have had a lot of conversations about that with her not really understanding and, you know, wanting to learn more and saying, I don't mm -hmm. really understand, so help me. And, you yeah. know, we talked about how it starts as a choice. But then we also talked about, I said, now you have to stop and think before you go any further about how it started as a choice. Yeah. Why did they make the choice? Well, because it's hard. I mean, that's everybody. Everybody has trauma. Everybody has something they don't want to deal with. It could be you. It could be me. It could be our own feelings. It could be some, you know, horrible past. And so we mask it. I mean, addiction can be many things, right? Alcohol, drugs, sex, exercise, you know, food, etc. Because that's easier than, you know, going, diving deep into the hard stuff and the difficult feelings and addressing it all. And I feel like people don't have the tools to do it either. Coping skills are like common sense. Mm -hmm. They're not so common. And it's, it's when you can't talk about it and you feel like you're going to make, like you already feel bad about it, right? Because on some right. level, you know. So if you're already feeling bad about it and you're already feeling bad about yourself and then you know, you know that if you reach out for help, there's going to be somebody yeah. who is going to make you feel even worse for it. And that's the last thing that you need. That's not going to start you off mm -hmm. on a good path to recovery. Just that's our, so much of our society is like sweeping yeah. under the rug. We or, don't talk about it. And who would deal with like, some really hor horrible things in his childhood and ended up becoming um, an alcoholic. And he said, cause his dad would be like, man up, you know, men do that kind of stuff and he's like you know are you a you know a pussy or not and you're just like bro yeah drop it i learned a lot of things about my grandparents when they passed away that i never knew i never saw either of them smoke i never saw either of them drink and like it's it's like when they passed away, it was like, okay, so now we can tell yeah. the truth about all of these mom. things that were happening. And, like, he really, my grandfather was a very mm -hmm. heavy drinker when he was young. And he was in the military. Uh -huh. He definitely had some PTSD. And he had some, he had some pretty scary moments at home that, like, I look at my mom and I'm like, how did you never tell me that? almost did that to himself like and you know and then you delve into the history and his father had there were nine kids he they had gotten laid off like they had laid off this entire company and oh, he wow. threw himself on the train tracks and he did that so that my great grandmother could get life insurance so she could take care of herself oh and the my kids. gosh that is so sad it's so. He grew up without a dad because, in his in his mind, his dad, you know, was still a hero oh. because he did that to save his family. Yeah. Like he just and like mom didn't. My mom didn't tell me that until I was older, and I was like, "How did I never?" It's, well, you know, know, the younger that? gen. I mean, the younger, the older generations. Um, you know, I talk to my mom about this stuff all the time because I like to have deep conversations. 
and my mom, you know, when we were raised, I mean, there was so many things that, you know, as a good Lutheran, you don't talk about. So it's nothing sexual. Uh, right. We're called the chosen frozen. And so everything is cloaked in religion, you know, like good Lutherans don't do this and good Lutherans don't do that. And I'm just like, okay, mom, we can be Lutheran without having to have all this stuff tied to it. But she tied the stuff to it because her right. mom tied the stuff to it. Have to do that, like we okay. can talk about anything. So, you know, I'm trying to be the one with my children, like, come to me first, don't ask your friends. I mean, I had to ask my friends and I had to ask my sisters, and it would have been nice just to be able to ask my parents and come directly with them. But that wasn't their generation. You don't talk about mental health, you don't talk about your sexuality, you don't talk about any kind of confusion, you don't really talk about any of your emotional needs, you're just like suck it up, and you're thinking. And it's so common, yep. so, so, so common. It was don't talk about it and it wasn't yeah. happening. It was denial, denial, denial. And if it was, if and they're crying, so I'll give you something to cry about. <laughs> but I mean, they, they lived a rough, survival they lived a hard them. life. It was just surviving. Sure. Yeah, and my, my grandma, <laughs> my grandma used to have this Bible that she got when she was a little girl, I guess. And she used to write in it. So if you didn't come to a holiday, like we used to make jokes about it. Oh, your name's going to get she put in the Bible. Attendance record in the Bible? Like, would put it in the Bible. And like, if you, so I remember when it first came up, like when I first learned that it even existed, she put my mom's divorce in the Bible. And they had a discussion about it. And my mom's like, did you just put my divorce? like the date of my divorce in your Bible. And she's yes. like, so casual. She's like, yes. Yes. My the mom's like, did I just get a black I'm mark from getting divorced? She's like, no. So why are you writing in the Bible? So I can remember. <laughs> but like, this is definitely, it was a, in it the was Bible. like a, it was a, like not like a spiral bag, book, not like her own diary or journal in, in the back of the, right Bible. In, the back of the <laughs> in her beautiful little script writing. Sarah did not come to Christ. Who has said Bible with all the documented infractions now? <laughs> oh God, I think it's still at their house. I don't think anyone wants to touch it or look at it. God, because God, the thing is, like, you never, yeah. you never saw it. So you don't really know much is in it. I just know that, like, it came up a couple of times over the years because I remember, like, pleading my Bible. case, like, trying to get myself out of the Bible. And I'm, I'm like, Grandma, I had to work. Like, I'm new at this job. It's a big, like, I can't turn around and ask for a Christmas off. She was just like, no, nope. you could have come before work. That's fair. I could have done up that. early. You're right. But like there's like this there's still this like shroud of mystery that like you don't actually <laughs> know what she was putting in there. But she would just she'd get it out, you know, like she'd come out with it and you wouldn't be able to see what she was writing and she'd write something. And you're like, oh, somebody's in trouble. But she wouldn't be mad at you. She would never be mad. She was very, you know, even toned and even killed. She'd be like, so are you mad that I didn't come to Christmas? No. You had to work. But like, <clears throat> like oh but my God. Then like, is she a psycho? Gets... Okay. You give her the Bible. I'm curious. So does she have like all these names? And then like, is it like tick marks of your infractions listed in the Bible? Or if, <laughs> if it is the grandchildren, I would bet money five that I have cross the most. Five, five. I was the the mouthiest, the most sarcastic, like she, her most famous pose was one hand on the hip, the other hand had a spatula, uh -huh. waving the spatula at you, and all the other kids would like, like and she never, oh my god, she never would have yeah. smacked us with a spatula. Um, all the kids would like run, like, oh no, we're in trouble, and they'd run, and I'd be the one that'd be standing there <laughs> talking back. Every time, every time. So I'm sure that, and now she put that in the Bible. Oh is she still alive or is she deceased? Nope, she passed away. So she, 
uh, my grandfather passed away in November oh, of 2020. COVID, was it? Um, we, we think we think that it might have, I mean, he wasn't in, he wasn't in top notch health at that time, but we do think that it played a part mm -hmm. because he did end up getting pneumonia. Um, so it just kind of, I have a feeling that if it wasn't the main cause, it definitely was part of it. Um, he was married to my grandmother for a very, uh, I, I remember celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary and that was quite some time ago so they've been married for yeah. I mean most of their lives um and my grandmother at that point had there there would be times where she might repeat a story that she would tell you but at the same time she's got like eight kids yeah. and 45 grandchildren you know got a lot of people to tell her stories to so she you know she had like a touch of repeating herself now and then um, and I think that she was, Aww. I truly think she was very heartbroken when he passed away and she just mm -hmm. like kind of sank into her mind in that she went like full blown <laughs> dementia. Like she was no longer, she was no longer yeah. mentally with us and she passed away nine months later. Um, I was very, I could think of no better way to honor them than I asked mm -hmm. to this, this was after I was ordained and I I could wow, do the that's eulogy so, so I was um I was able to to just have no I could do what I could write whatever I wanted and I felt there was no better way to like honor I spent mm -hmm. so much time growing up with my grandparents and so I reached out to to all the kids and I reached out to all the grandkids and I said, what's one thing that you think, I know there's probably a lot, but pick one thing that you really think you inherited or learned from grandpa. And, and so I kind of, I put in there, you know, that he'd live on in the, how fiercely Liz loves her family. And, you know, each person had their own, you know, how much, how much Randy loves cars and how because... Larry works and will each thing um and it was so it was so special and it was so like it felt very I felt very connected and it was like there was no better way to say goodbye than that um so then when when my grandmother had passed they asked me to do hers as well so um I did hers and uh, uh they they obviously have they go through the funeral home and they handled the whole thing. And then I just came in to the eulogy and I was also um, one of the pallbearers wow. for both of them. So I don't know what you call the mm -hmm. funeral director. Are they also members? I guess. Um, I remember. Okay. So they've been around for a long time. A lot of our funeral homes, we don't have a ton in the area They're They've been around for a very long time. It's kind of like a family affair type of situation. So the guy that was there at my grandmother's, he had been doing this for a very, very long time. And his father had also done it. And I remember like there was no higher compliment than it was done. And I was folding the paper back up and going back to my seat. And he said, I've heard a lot of eulogies in my time. I've spoken a lot of eulogies in my time. And I do not think that I have ever heard one that had people laughing one moment and then crying the next and then feeling oh, at ease oh, at the end. Right. I was like, I'll Beautiful never compliment. forget that he said that. Yeah, I was like, that's like such high praise from oh, yeah. someone who sees yeah. so many well, families. I, you know, I've been to a fair amount, and that's what you want, right? You want to hear the stories. And I, I think sometimes the ones in the funeral home tend to be more personal because you don't have the whole church service. I know when you have the church service, yeah. you know, my dad was buried in the church and um, they're like, you have like 10 minutes to talk about him and then an hour worth of service. I was like, bro, oh, come on. Like it's a whole lifetime when we get 10 minutes. And then, yeah, I think that's really, I mean, mm -hmm. what a nice, nice, beautiful compliment. It, yeah, it was really, and it was like, it was nice to have yeah. my own special way to say goodbye. And especially since, like, 
with my grandma being in her 80s, she had no idea what I have my own website <laughs> yeah. means. What what does it mean when you review a TV show? What does that mean? You watch them. So, so it was a cool it was a it was just a really cool way to incorporate that, that in that way and her being present when I gave my grandfather's because he had a deeper, he had such a love of reading. We got him a Kindle uh, many years ago, like when they had first come out and he Whoa, would read, read a good book for a day. him. And that's so good for your mind and keeping up your capacity. Mm -hmm. uh, there's like a Western fictional series. It's very popular. I can't think of it, but like yeah. they're fairly, they're fairly yeah, short. Yeah. They're like the Harlequin size. And he'd read one a day. Like we would like struggle to keep up putting <laughs> books on this flipping Kindle talk. for him. And the button to page was wore right out. There was no, there was no arrow left on that. And I mean, I like, I totally got my love of reading from him. So he got it. Like mm -hmm. when I told him I got a site and I write stuff, he was Shoot, like, "Dude, he could have been a contributor." <laughs> oh, man, he, he was great. So it was really almost kismet in a way that my grandmother was able to be present mm -hmm. when I did his, because then she was like, "Yeah, I I get it. I get it now." So I was like, "Oh, like." that's that's really cool and that's just one more like really good thing that ended up you know it was like it you know blossomed so many things blossomed mm -hmm. from it like it's this terrible thing but you know yeah you can bring your family closer together and it can kind of like remind you i think every once in a while you know obviously not that way because that's super devastating but i think that every once in a while we can use a reminder that you have one life I and know, and to yet. make the most of it, because I feel like we always assume that tomorrow is promised, and it's not, it's not for anybody, you know? I just got, tonight, I was, before we jumped on this, I just got, I love getting my parents into new shows, and it's really hard to find one that we can all watch together. Um, the only one that we're able to all watch together, this is how pathetic it is, because we're <laughs> such different tastes, is Yellowstone. I have to. Okay, but I mean, TikTok is just so, loaded with Yellowstone, and Tara loves it. You need, I have yet to meet anyone who doesn't like it. doesn't matter what your I taste TV is, you will like Yellowstone. For, for sure. So tonight we're like, oh, like, what is there to watch? Like, it's, it's very rare that we get family time, because I'm always not here. <laughs> um, so I was like, oh, like, you know, I've been hearing all these great things about Ted Lasso on Apple TV. Never watched it, but I hear just constant great things. I'm like, yeah, let's try it. We'll try it together. We all loved it. And there's like, a, like, it's so, it's like so good. And the quotes that come from it, I'm like, I love every line of this show. And there was one, we're only on episode three. And there was this one line where he, it's played by Jason Sudeikis. So yeah. you expect it to be like ridiculous and funny. And it, but there's like this, it's very serious mm -hmm. and inspirational tone to it. Very unexpected. And he said, he made a comment that said, they say that youth is wasted on the young. And I think that we need to make sure that wisdom isn't wasted on the wise. Oh, I like that. So I was like, oh my God, I like that. Like, you know, so as older, you're wiser, <clears throat> exactly. so don't waste it. That instead of looking back and like, you know, ah, oh, that wistful, like, youth is, youth is wasted on these young people. Like, what I wouldn't give for, you know, I don't want to go back and be young again. That means I am right now, and I'm going to use what I learned then and use what I'm learning now. And I just really like, like I thought of it. And like, it was kind of funny because I was like, haha, like, it doesn't really make sense. But at the same time, I was like, oh, yeah, it kind of does. It and it resonates. Like, oh, my gosh. Wait a minute. <laughs> that damn who's the writer of this show because they got some great quotes going on like it's just it's very good and i just i'm very i look i'm all about quotes <laughs> um i'm huge into quotes i actually 
when my when my grandmother passed i wanted to like i really wanted to do something like i don't know you really you want something that you're gonna remember them that's gonna yeah. be just yours in a way and what better way oh. than a tattoo I'm scared of needles go ahead <laughs> so i went to my best friend kate the magnificent artist and i said do you think you could work with me to create like i know that no one will understand better what i'm trying to describe than so so what i did was um my grandma and i used to make jokes all the time about how um you know guys do something bad and try to make up for it by getting you roses or they try to woo you by getting you roses and she's like what are they gonna learn roses are cliche if anybody's gonna get me a flower and we would we both said a sunflower and, and my favorite color has always been purple and i remember being very little and her telling me have you ever heard of a midnight sunflower and i was like no I, what's that I she's like it's a purple either. sunflower yeah yeah so they're like a they're purple, but there's, there's many shades. Mm -hmm. So it's more of like a burgundy. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. So we used to talk about that all the time. Like that was like a kind of a, an inside joke with us was like, we don't want any of those roses. If you really want to get us, you got to figure out that we like sunflowers and not just any kind of sunflowers, like figure it out. Like it was just this, this thing with us. And my grandfather was huge traveler um for work and for military and for pleasure and we like anytime we took a trip to syracuse which is like this big it's what we would call a city it's not really a city to you but it's a city um so we have the interstate and mm -hmm. he worked on parts of the interstate so he would be like see that over there i built that and he'd be like you know what it curves around like that because there's a sinkhole there oh and we lost wow. we lost the loader in there and i was like that happens he's like yeah so we had to build mm -hmm. the road the exit around it and all these cool like he is a piece of history so we have a local obviously yeah. we have a local bar of course we do um and the building is in the middle of a section of a bridge and it sits That's on an island and that's really cool. Yeah. I mean, but how do you get to it? I mean, I guess there's like a walkway over the. So mm. the, you have the bridge that goes across and then halfway is sits the building. So you kind of like park at the it's end of the bridge wild. and then you just walk and you go in. Yeah. No way. Really? Yeah. That's so years cool. and years and years ago. He built it. Yeah, so he has this, like, huge love of all of that, and he always had, I was at a compass, and, you know, he was always, like, teaching, like, let me teach you how, if you ever get lost in the woods, you know, you find the North Star, and Don't listen. get yourself home, and, yeah, uh, the, and he was always uh, very, sunflower? like, sunflower? What, you said you are getting a tattoo that? to honor So it's for, it's for both of them. So I incorporated my grandmother and I's love of sunflowers and I incorporated my grandfather's love of travel and his always his compass and things like that. And then my mom and I have a favorite quote, which is rough roads lead to beautiful Ooh, destinations. Yeah. And we talk, talk about that one a lot and we always have so I got together with Kate and I'll see if I can show you wow that artwork is amazing yeah so I went to I went to a local artist who had was very very good and I met with him a few times and not all tattoo artists are okay doing someone uh, else's drawing oh yeah and maybe Oh, but the shading um, between the purple yeah. and blue is beautiful. Yep. So he, I said, you know, I want to put your own little spin on it. Like, I'm okay with that. And he was like, nope, this That's is perfect. Really cool. Just the way it is. Yeah. And it took, it took like an hour and a half. Um, and when I like, I was like, okay, I'm not going to look. I don't want to see the pro. I, I only want to the end product. And I'm sure it, because thought, it's so beautiful. And then 
reason you're getting it is beautiful. Yep. So yeah. So it's like a, it's always there. Um, I always try to, you know, keep my mother in mind with where I would put it. Um, so I like to have it somewhere where if I feel that I need to cover it up, I can cover it up. If I don't feel that I need to cover it up, I don't. I've been fortunate enough that I've never felt like I needed to cover it up. <laughs> um, that's probably, I get a lot of compliments on it. Like I get a lot of, um, when I'm at work, a patient like mid sentence, Oh my God, that's really nice. Like it's very, and then I get to, I get yeah, to tell them the story. It's beautiful. Yeah, really. It's a really, for me, it's a really great, yeah. great way to help their memories live on. Um, and it's a really great way to connect them forever to each other and to my mom. It's really yeah. sweet. Well, we've been on for like an hour and a half. It goes by so fast with you because you have, like I said, the best stories. Like, I don't know. I'm telling you. I told you last time. It's only <laughs> no, because I'm bored. You're not bored or bored. If I was bored, anything exciting. Well, we'll have to do this again in the new year. But I hope you and yours okay. your family have a beautiful christmas and a wonderful new year yeah. stay safe and then we'll talk you in the too. new year about what your goals are and geez girl all the different things that uh, you're going to be kicking off in 2023 right back at gotcha. you we're gonna we're gonna be promoting your book no, i'm super excited I gotta get to that review thing it finished writing i'm just like stop adding so much stuff and no, I'll, I'll <laughs> it's gonna be like 700 pages <laughs> perfect You're so... and then I'll oh my gosh it's ridiculous more. but yeah so that's my goal is to get that thing finished get it out to you guys and then start edits in january so i can publish it at the end mm. you got it. <laughs> Thank you. you got it <laughs> and i will be Go texting down. you any more questions i have like covers and other stuff of course. I'm always here. All right. Well, you have a wonderful weekend and a beautiful Christmas. Thank you. You too. Bye. See you later.